Alright class, welcome back from recess. Hope everyone got a cup of coffee or a nice snack. Um, and Billy got something for himself, but nothing for me. <sighs> Great. He didn't even give the change back that I gave him to buy his own little snack. Whatever. Alright, um, we left off the lecture here, uh, talking about the great three-year hat war between Hat Club and Lids. Um, we left off talking about a uh, big change that Lids was going to do with their website. Uh, we went into how they realized that the Fanatics merger uh, for the website handling and maintenance seemed like a good, good idea at the time, but in the end, it was just flat out um, anti, um, but anticlimactic, you could say, where when these new hats came out, uh, they were really, really hard to find. So that's what was really the last. That's what that's the straw that broke the camel's back, as the old phrase goes. So let's look into let's continue the lecture here. Uh, we'll go up on the screen here with the slides. So other long-term changes with lids. So the website would change from the for the Fanatics format to a new design. Um, it was a little bit different than what the old lids website was, but at least it was something different. It was somewhere that could premiere and posterize the new hats that lids was coming out with which made things a whole lot easier to access to. Um, eventually, New Era would regain the license, would regain the licensing and the rights to NHL apparel and headwear, which this was huge. What this meant uh, is a very sudden change uh, that came about, and Lid was right on it, right away. And that's that boom in getting back NHL hats, New Era 1550 NHL hats, was a huge thing for Lids. That they were the standard fan website that, yes, Hat Club, you know, had exclusive hats. They also had some on field hats, but they were more looked at as an exclusive designer hat retailer, whereas with Lids, they were for, you know, basic fans just coming off the, the street. You know, hey, my favorite team is in the starting new season. Or, hey, this team is in the championship game. I just need to grab a hat to show my support. That's what the lids was for. Especially in being in the brick and mortar store scene environment. That's what really helped them. So that was a big change. Lids would go back and revert to some of the older program features. Um... Especially with being able to use your ten dollar rewards online instead of in only in store. Uh, based on that, you know, you really can't get a Nationals hat in Chicago. Uh, you can't get a, a Seattle Mariners hat in Pittsburgh that are in these colorways. And some people like to collect a non-local sports team, so Lid made it easier and made it more enticing and in incentivizing to buy, uh, which also meant that you still got the code each month for your access pass. That that would never change. But it would change of what hats were eligible, that you could still get the newest drop hats for the 20% off. And it was alluded to in an interview with Tom Ripley, CEO of Lids, and Dre616, the YouTube channel, that was an access pass, uh, they would have, those people would have special hat access to hats that people wouldn't be able to get in store. It would only be online, which made it really great uh, for exclusivity, and it really made it worth that $5 per year. Now granted, well, originally it would be $5, they would raise the price to $10 a year. A lot of people were a little upset with that, but it was still uh, well worth it with all the savings you could get and all the other exclusive uh, rewards and and hats you could get with the membership. Um, and you would also be able to ship a hat 
to the store. Uh, not for free all the time, but uh, there were certain requirements you had to meet, but you could still ship to the store. Sometimes you had to meet a certain threshold to get free shipping to the store. Long-term changes with Hack Club. They realized that it was going to be hard for them to compete with lids if they kept coming out with new hats per month, but they were in brick-and-mortar stores. So Hat Club instead retaliated. They would come together, and they would launch and set up new stores of their own, new brick-and-mortar stores across the country. They would have them in Los Angeles, Houston, Chicago, Philadelphia, two in Atlanta, and one in Miami. This was huge. This wasn't... This would never have a way to equalize out what Lids would do with brick and mortar stores. It just would be near impossible for Hack Club to do that. But expanding the ability to buy in store made it easier and made Hack Club uh, more well known. It would get those off the street fans that would go to Lids, those common hat collectors, away from Lids and introduce them to a new hat retailer, and see, hey, in store, there's this. But guess what? Online, there's a ton more hats that are out there that are cool, just like what we have in store. Maybe different teams, maybe even cooler in online. But the new brick-and-mortar stores will be huge for Hat Club. Uh, this would be a very key thing about Hat Club. Uh, by the end of 2021, that unless you had a Hack Club employee ID number, uh, you would not be granted uh, Hack Club early access. Uh, you would not be able to get, you know, hats early on, you know, through uh, what they used to call the invoice gang, um, or what they used to call hat privilege. So, uh, to further uh, incentivize and get people interested into Hat Club, uh, they made the hats more available, uh, reducing the number of people that they would send hats out to early for. Uh, yes, it would help with hype, but Hat Club believed in themselves that they were strong enough to use their own creators uh, on social media, especially Instagram, to share with the world and share with the hat community and the world that they had new hats coming out you didn't, they didn't really need anyone else to preview the hats, but instead they did it themselves and they were able to get more people involved and they were able to sell more hats to everyone else. Of course, the early access pass or membership thing would still apply for like those early access drop days on like a Saturday, but other than that, no one else, unless you had a Hat Club employee ID number, you or on their payroll, you would get a hacked Hat Club hat early. Another big thing that Hat Club would uh, go through is changing the way that the website would handle traffic. That 2021, the psychotic zero giraffe code was helped to stop a boatload, a shit ton, to be honest of bots and resellers from claiming and snatching up graphics cards that NVIDIA would put out and other high-tech computer parts that were very popular at the time, going in from 2020 into 2021. And this program that Psychotic Zero Draft would develop that was used by NVIDIA was later used for Hack Club, which would help stop the block of resellers and bots from obtaining hats away from regular hat collectors, or they would say um, it would just prevent cart jacking. Cart jacking is a term used when you're so far into the process of buying a hat, especially on Hat Club, you selected the hat, your size. You're either going through the payment info or the shipping info or shipping payments, and then all of a sudden the next screen, right before you actually hit the submit complete order button, it's gone. So that is cart jacking. This program would help save cart jacking and would allow more hat collectors to have a chance to get a 
Hat Club hat. So all those jokes in the early years of, you know, Hat Club only makes five, ten hats per size. That's why they sell out so fast. Um, those complaints went away pretty fast. They were still around, but they really, really went down because of this program, this line of code that was written. A few more long-term changes that would happen that were kind of coincided with both Hat Club and Lids and other things that would have happened include the New Era plant factory bring bought, being brought back to Derby. Uh, this was huge that uh, hats would be again made for uh, regular hat consumers in they'd be made in the USA. This would be this would happen in mid 2022 uh, to keep up with the demands of Hat Club and Liz selling out all these exclusive hats. Uh, New Era recognizing that they needed a more local place to make the hats and to keep up with the demands. Hat prices would rise and then they would go back down. So it, it would fluctuate. Uh, a lot of hat consumers were unhappy with that, but for what the designs were that uh, Hat Club and Lids shilled out, that what they delivered, what they were dropping, plenty of people were still picking up. 47 brand did make an attempt to, you know, play along. They kind of partnered with Lids a bit to try with colored underbrims and side patch hats at one point. Um, it did give a little boost to Lids for, you know, hat diversity. And it brought a few, some consumers in, new hat consumers in, but it wasn't a big uh, blow that, you know, Hat Club wouldn't be able to recover from. Um, so that experiment lasted only about, uh, I think it was like three, maybe four months at most. Resellers, where they stopped? Kind of. Um, they were better monitored throughout eBay, where plenty of times, especially when Liz came out with their new colored underbrims, that you would have eBay resellers posing these hats as Hat Club exclusive hats. Uh, that was one thing that both Lids and Hat Club kind of came together on to stop. Um, that was really the only, like, you know, olive branch that they really extended to each other. But otherwise, um, it was minimalistic in the effort, but it did make a difference that a lot of resellers um, were stopped, mainly because of the availability of the Hat Club and Lids hats and with the different programs and reward options through their memberships for each retailer that was offered, gave more incentive for a average hat consumer, average hat collector to just buy directly from the retailer instead of having to wait for a reseller. So it was more of the resellers being naturally selected out of their power than of Lids and Hat Club really cracking down on them. So of course this made a huge divide of the hat community and the hat world. And this would lead uh, to a lot of blowbacks with each other, a lot of uh, hat collectors out there on Instagram and YouTube channels out there. They would go at each other about how you know Lids was stealing designs from Hat Club and how you know, Lid might have been doing something better than Hat Club, or vice versa, um, and it would get nasty. Uh, a lot of fights would break out online. Um, the hat community would be divided uh, pretty, pretty vastly. It was a great schism. Um, a lot of people were able to forgive Lids and what they did. Um, some people weren't able to and would move on to Hat Club uh, permanently, those Lids loyalists. Some did not go back to Lid. Some went to Hat Club. Some people just still could not stand that Hat Club was giving out hats and giving access to hats for people early on before regular consumers could, and that they did not crack down on resellers, that uh, just more appeared that they weren't meeting the demands. Um, so they went to Lids instead, where they knew that they could meet the demands and that if a hat sold out, that they would that those hats would be made again. So it was a real big divide. And of course, all these YouTube channels for hats out there would kind of want to moderate, or some took sides. Uh, some 
were big proponents for Liv or big proponents for Hat Club, and it got it did get nasty. Mud flinging was happening, name calling was happening. Of course, that happens all the time, but it really caused a huge divide, a lot of drama in the hack community. In 2024, there would be a treaty that would be signed between the two major hat companies to end this war. May 9th, 2024, 5950 day. Representatives of Hat Club and LIDS came together to meet with moderators Dre616 and Professor Hatter on a live stream that was streamed from the New Era plant in Derby. Uh, this caused a huge watch. Uh, this caused a huge event that everyone was watching. Um, this would bring uh, Professor Hatter to become the first YouTube hat channel to reach uh, 1 million subscribers. Um, this was huge for him. Um, this was a, an event that lasted nearly two hours where both Lids and Hat Club just hash it out in person, and then uh, the moderators would settle things down and divide up uh, how more friendly competitive the two companies could be, how there was no need to uh, fight this drastically, that these differences made hat consuming great. This is what made it interesting. This is what made it uh, so thriving, that there were options that hat consumers could go to. And of course, there were other hat retailers out there, hat companies, like Hat Heaven, or My Fitteds, um, Exclusive Fitteds, uh, Sports World, uh, Toppers, um, Anthem, uh, inter other, other international companies too, that um, were kind of, that would take sides throughout this three-year Great War, but would come to the conclusion that this diversity of different hat retailers made hat collecting so interesting that there was no one place that you had to get your hat from, but that you had options. So this realization uh, was signed through this treaty, and this three-year hat war came to an end. There were no casualties that we uh, pre precisely know of. Um, some metaphorical casualties we uh, might uh, know about. But um, it was it was long. I, I remember it. It was pretty drastic. It was intense. It was a lot to take in, and um, you just kind of wondered, you know, either you were totally with Hat Club or you're totally with Lit. Um, I experienced a few people that um, were in the middle. Um, more often, uh, people who took sides were more fitted meatheads that were 100% fitted all the way through. Um, that would more take pride in what you know their hat collection was in terms of the side patches and the underbrims and different color size colors that they would have. But like the average hat collector, some took sides, but those people had a um, enjoyable perspective that they had the options, but of course would be a part of the carnage that um, a lot of people who, who did take sides uh, would call out those middlers, would call those people out, um, that they were unfitted for the hat community. Uh, that, that was a big uh, derogatory term that was kind of coined around, that they were unfitted. Even though some people, even though people were buying fitted hats, 50 and 50 fitted hats, um, a lot of people in the hat community would call out those um, unfitted for the real hat community, whether they were taking sides on lids or hat club. So that was a, you know, it was a lot to take in. But it came to an end. It was a great ceremony, a great treaty, great summit. With Dre616, um, great, great guy himself, uh, of course, um, being the more calmer demeanor of that summit that really brought things together and would reunify the competitive, not aggressive, but the friendly competitive nature between Hack Club and Lid. So you know, the unsung hero 
um, many people might have forgotten about in that war, if at the end that was Dre 616, that would uh, become the great hat unifier. It was an intense time to be a hat collector then. A lot of trends, a lot of experimentation really, and a lot happened. So, uh, that is it for lecture today. Um, we're going to then get into the uh, no brim trend uh, next time in class and then talk about holographic brims. So that'll be in our next Hat History Lesson 302 lecture. Um, if you did take notes, great. Um, if you didn't, that's fine. Just to enjoy, maybe like a little TED Talk here. If you're new to the class here, uh, welcome to uh, Hat University in the year 2052. We are at a million subscribers here, but of course, um, you know, back in the day when it was like, you know, March of March or April of 2021, um, the channel did not get a lot of uh, attention, did not get a lot of students in the classroom. So um, I hope that you were one of those students that was subscribing to the channel, to the school here, to become one of those one million subscribers. Um, so I hope you helped make history. Um, if you didn't, you're going to regret it, not being a part of this great channel here. It was always a thrill to make these videos. Uh, back in the day, and I enjoy being in this, uh, this sedentary teaching environment here. Make sure you also leave a comment down below if you learned anything today from class here, if you think that history would actually be would turn out differently, let me know. Uh, let me know your what-if theories on the great three-year hat war of Liz and Hat Club. Um, again, thank you for your time today. For watching. As always, hats off to you for watching. I'll see you the next time in class, everyone. Have a good day, everyone. Class is dismissed. Bye, everyone.